I'm gonna show you how to take this to get this. Now, if you're not familiar with what this is, this is called a mortar. But they can still be used today to sample load deposits out in the field if you don't have enough money to buy a high-end impact mill. The trick to making these work is to make sure you've got the right size classifier to go with them. That's critical if you're going to be out hunting load gold. Now I got a bucket of high-grade gold ore here. I'm going to show you how you can process this material using nothing more than a mortar and pestle. And that way, if you guys decide you want to use that in the field, cut down on your cost and your weight, then you can do it too. I got about 5,000 grams of gold ore here that we're going to process. And we'll find out what the grade is on this material. And I'll show you other ways of processing it if you don't want to use a mortar and pestle. Now, for starters, I highly recommend a 20 mesh screen. It's, if you don't have a classifier that's 20 mesh, you can get window screen from Home Depot or Lowe's and then just use that. Now the reason why I always suggest using a 20 mesh to start off with is because load gold is generally really small. Unless you got some high grade pockets that have chunky gold in it, which we do, then I highly recommend starting off with a 20 mesh screen. And you can work your way all the way up to an eighth. Now the way that you know this is a 20 mesh screen, because there's 20 openings per linear inch. And that's how you can determine the size of a screen. Make sure it's clean, nothing's in there that will contaminate your sample. You're gonna fill it up to about a third. You don't want too much because it'll be impossible to grind. That's a good amount to start with right there. Now when you're crushing it, do not put your hands on the outer edge. Do not hold it like this. I like to hold mine like this because if you hold it this way or this way, chances are you're going to come down and strike your finger and it's going to hurt real bad. Hold it on the edge to stabilize it. Just like a stamp mill back in the old days. You're gonna have to periodically stop because if you don't, it's just gonna compact and it won't crush properly. So then you're gonna dump out what you have through a 20 mesh screen on top of your gold pan. Shake it out. Whatever's left goes right back in the mortar. And I highly recommend you wearing eye protection. All it takes is one of those fragments, especially if it's silica, which is sharp on the edges, flying up and get you in that eye. When you're finished, it should look something like that. That's perfect for sampling. You see how fine the powder is? Put some jet dry in the water, just a little. Jet dry breaks the surface tension of the water. That way the ultra fine gold doesn't have a tendency to float on top. Tap it down, which concentrates all the gold to the front of the pan. And then you're just gonna swirl it out real quick to see what you got. Shake it down. Nice. Let's take a look at that under a jeweler's loop. I don't know if you can see that. not all right i don't know if you can see that ultra fine gold and large chunks and see the the wolfenite crystals in there you see that there's a whole bunch of wolfenite crystals really ultra fine gold that is nice now, if you don't want to use a mortar and pestle because it's too time consuming, they make small impact mills, ones that look like this. This right here is technically considered a flail impact crusher made by K&M and it's the 11 inch drum on here. Now, this is designed to be a pilot mill and they also sell the 14 inch, which is a production unit. Uh, this is a flail because it uses chains and they also make another one where they have hammers in here and each one of these is used in particular scenarios. But I'm going to go over these, these K&Ms. I like these K&Ms. What I like is they got the feeder in the back. I see a lot of guys put the feeder on the top. Don't like that because it wants to kick the rock straight up and out. You put the feeders on the back and then when it runs in, it collects it up, it picks it up and it slams against this wall right here. Okay? And then it runs it around and then there's usually a screen in the bottom and when it gets to a particular size, whichever that screen size is, it'll come out the bottom of the feed tube right here. Now we run all different types of materials. We run limonite, shirt and clay, quartz, which is a really, really hard material. So what we like to do is on ours, weld it in these paddles right here. See that? Now this serves two purposes. Uh, what it does is it increases the airflow as this thing is spinning counterclockwise like such. It brings the rock in, it slams it against this wall over here, and it creates a tremendous amount of airflow. 
and by doing so it actually will blow the finer material out. On the side wall here if you notice we put in these strike plates. It's just basically a welded bead here and here because as soon as the rock comes in it's going to kick it right into this section right here. Is that they got a lot of the feeders on the bottom here and you got a classification screen there. Well we work with a lot of limonite if you've seen my other video and the limonite will plug that up. So what we've done is we put an, um, an exhaust tube on here and if you look we put a screen right here. This is our classification screen and because it's mounted on the side it doesn't get a lot of abuse. And I can slide the screen out and slide a different size screen in. If you're going to be building one of these, put the exit port here on the side, right above the entry port. And the reason why you don't want it next to it is because when that rock comes in, it's going to explode from the impact and you don't want it shooting off to the side. It goes in, material hits the strike plate, bam, breaks into more pieces. It starts to circulate around, around, keeps hitting the strike plate. It can't get out until it reaches the size of that classification screen and then it'll actually rotate around the top here and blow right out the side. Now I've seen on a lot of models that people either make or you can buy where the shaft comes all the way through to the front plate. I don't like that design because a lot of times when you're doing like sampling you're going to need to take that front plate off and that's really hard to do if the shaft comes all the way through to the front. Now if you plan on putting an exit port on the front of these plates, make sure that it's angled the same direction that the material is going around inside of this drum here. A lot of dust is going to be made from this thing, okay? A lot. You're going to need an exit port on here, okay? So all that dust can run out. Now, I've seen some guys put vacuum cleaners on the end of these to help pull the material through and suck out that dust. And I've seen guys put vacuum cleaner exhaust bags on here just to keep the dust down. If you don't have a vent somewhere on your bucket, what's going to happen is, is all that dust is going to create back pressure and it's going to start to come out the top of this feeder and it's going to have issues with the material trying to blow out of there. Now keep in mind you're going to need a jaw crusher to break that material down to half inch minus before you feed it into your impact mills. It'll make it much more efficient and it'll cut down on wear and tear on your mill. The reason why they do it like this is because that way you could take a rock like this, which is quartz, very hard rock, and then you could put it through a jaw crusher and turn it into something like that. See that? That's more manageable. And then something like that goes down here into an impact mill or a rod mill or ball mill, and then it takes that, turns it into powder. That's right. It's real easy to get gold out of powder. Now you can have a chain mill, a hammer mill, a rod mill, a ball mill, some kind of a mill that's gonna take it down to a really fine powder. Now we built this one ourselves. This is a chain mill. It's got eight chains on the inside. The most efficient way to get a lot of material to pass through here is to have a lot of surface area on your screen. And the easiest way to do that is put it on the side of the drum. Now make sure that it sits right above where your intake is. Because if not, when those rocks come in and hit those chains, they're going to explode and try to come up through that screen. So you have it set just a little bit higher. I got two locks down here on the bottom. One and two. When you take those off, this whole thing lifts up. You see where I've got my screen up in there. I can change it out to any size I want. And there's the exit port right there, making it so much more efficient. Now we picked this 3x4 jaw crusher up from a company in Canada called 911 Metallurgist. I'll leave a link down below. These models come in both electric and gas, but I highly recommend the gas model. That way you can take it to the field. And then here we're feeding into a larger impact mill or flail mill that we built ourselves. And then from there it's going into the Gold Hog Multi-Sluice. It's fantastic for capturing very fine gold, and this setup works very well on a small scale. Now, if you want to move up from there, I highly recommend getting the Keen RC46 single roller or double roller jaw crusher with roller mill. This is a self-contained unit. Everything is complete, and the material that comes out the bottom is usually ready to run on the table. Some guys like to run it twice through the roller mill. Now, if you're interested in those little K&M crushers, well, I'm going to leave a link down below to where you can get them. And in fact, they sell just the frames in case you want to supply the motor yourself, both electric and gas. And mention my name, and they're going to give you a discount there too as well. Even though we have a screen in that K&M, I like to run it through a 20 mesh just to start with. I'll keep the oversized, the plus, out here and then I'll pan that later to see if there's any larger chunky stuff and then I'll open the mill up to see if there's any bigger pieces of gold that couldn't make it through that screen. Now we're gonna go ahead and pan that out and see what's in it. Look how fine that is. All right, let's see what we got. 
Look at that, I can already see gold coming out. Look at that. Right there along the top. Look at that. Oh, oh. Oh, chunkies. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. Nice. You see that? Oh, I'm going to get a jeweler's loop on that and take a peek at it. Nice. That's what I'm talking about. Ooh, there's a big chunky roll right there. You see it? There's some of that wolfenite. There's that ultra fine. Nice. That is a nice stream of gold right there. What you should be doing is running this over a shaker table because this is too fine for me to be hand panning. I know I lost a lot of it in my, my panning tub. Speaking of panning tubs, we're going to be giving away everything that is in the bottom of this panning tub. Panning tub is dry and there's quite a bit of material in there. Yeah, don't mind my pink scoop. That's my wife's scoop. Uh, oh yeah, not bad for a couple of scoops, huh? Ah, uh, that's three bags of material coming out of that pan and tub. That's a lot of material. Imagine all the gold that's in there. And then we'll take this, we'll smelt it down, and then cupel it to get the bead of gold. Now we're gonna be giving that gold ore away, and if you're interested in that, go ahead and click the link right here, make a $10 pledge to sign up, and you're in like Flynn. Now if you're interested in geology and understanding it so you can find your own gold deposits, I highly recommend this video right here. Go ahead and click on it, watch it. I guarantee you'll get information there you're not gonna find in any book. And I'll see you on the next video.